Welcome to the Movie Throne. I'm your host, the one and only King Kansas, here to bring you another movie review on YouTube land. What am I going to be discussing in this amazing video review? Well, I don't know if it's amazing, but it's going to come close to it. I'm doing Justice League. came out October 2017. It's the last DCEU film that I'll be reviewing until I get to the new stuff. So I completed the original ones. As if you guys were following me, I did the uh, Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, and Justice League. So I call this the trilogy of Superman until we get Man of Steel 2. So come on WB, wake the hell up. We need the movie. Anyways, thought I'd give you my review on this, so bear with me. I know a lot of people are going to be hating on this, so like I always do, non-spoiler, which is going to be very quick and simple. Then I'm going to get into uh, my spoiler review, which will have a couple of stuff or details anyways, in my opinion, that I have to highlight or discuss big time in my review. So you guys can decide if you're going to watch this damn thing. If you haven't seen it already, which I'm pretty sure all you guys have. Anyways, Justice League came out, like I said, in 2017. It stars Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, uh, Ezra Miller, uh, Jason Momoa. That's Aquaman's debut in this. And of course, Ben Affleck, which is Batman. Uh, what do you call it? It also has Jeremy Irons as Alfred. It also has uh, Diane Lane as his mother, Superman's mom. It also has Amy Adams as Lois. And I'm probably missing a whole bunch of other stuff too. But uh, for the most part, that's the characters of the film. Uh, my overall thoughts. It was okay. Uh, probably the weakest from all of them. Because as all of you guys know that the storyline got majorly tweaked. Uh, Mr. Zack Snyder had to leave the project because of a personal matter of his family, I think. So he had to leave the rest of this. And of course, Josh Whedon was called in to work his magic and boy did he work his magic you could tell something went down and something went wrong if you did what i did and watched the previous two like man of steel and then batman vs superman and then you went to this one night and day i'll tell you right now you really don't notice it if you watched it in the order that they came in like with the other movies in between like wonder woman and stuff but when you do watch them one two and three like i did you feel the difference storyline for justice league was okay it wasn't the greatest opening scene wasn't too great uh, jk simmons plays uh, gordon the way the team is assembled it's okay it wasn't the greatest uh all the actors did a decent job with what they were given. Oh my God! At the, you could tell lots of reshoots, more colorful than it was originally. Special effects, eh? Steppenwolf, the villain, didn't look too good. He's not even on close to the level as what we got with Thanos in the MCU. You could really tell, and even a lot of the CGI, you can tell that it was shot in front of a blue screen, so that kind of took you out of it. Batman, in my opinion, was dumbed down for this film. Uh, Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman's part was okay. I think she did well in this film. For me, Aquaman, Jason Momoa, this was his debut. So this was kind of like his movie, how Gal's or Wonder Woman's was Batman vs. Superman. She stole the show. He kind of did it in this one. You kind of got introduced to him because right after this, what did we get? We got Aquaman, right? But do I recommend you guys watching this? No. Uh, it's probably one of the worst of the DCU films. It's not unwatchable like people were claiming, oh my god. You do, you will enjoy yourself because you get all the Justice League members together in a sense. My Green Lantern. Um, it was cool to visit the different places that you've seen. A little bit of Atlantis. Amber Heard got introduced in here too as uh, Mara. So you'll see that part. Uh, the Amazons were cool. A little bit of the backstory. Steppenwolf, like I told you, was kind of shit. Uh, you know, missing a few things that they should have had and they took, they moved out of there and, you know, the way they used Superman wasn't good in my opinion, but overall, a mess. Let's just say that. Okay. Spoiler. Put the spoiler on. Okay. What the hell did I like about this film? I don't know. That's the hardest part. I love the fact that all the superheroes together. Um, Batman, like I said, was dumbed down. Like, Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne, amazing. Uh, his portrayal in this film, they really did a 360. 
the mustache gate really affected you right off the get-go like when you see Superman being interviewed on camera by the thing you could see something's off with his face like that is shit job I don't know what the hell they were doing they thought they could have got better workers something done Steppenwolf looked like cool as a character but he was shit on the screen like he wasn't even on the same level as Thanos let's just say that they didn't even it looks like they didn't even put the effort Gal Gadot did an amazing job as Wonder Woman. She did her part. She was, she, you know, her action scenes were cool. We've seen it before with Wonder Woman. So it wasn't like, oh my God, what the hell? I think she did more in uh, Batman vs. Superman than she did in this film. Jason Momoa made his debut as Aquaman. He did phenomenal. Like, he was cool to see. Amber Heard was introduced too as uh, Mera. That was kind of neat to see what there. The whole box thing there, like the three boxes and whatever, and Steppenwolf didn't do it for me. You could tell poor uh, Zack Snyder left the project because of death in the family and dealing with personal matters. And then you got Josh Whedon came in and you could tell his fingerprints are all over this. You could tell it got a lot lighter. If you watch the other two previous like I did, you could tell it's totally night and day. From the first two to this one, you can tell it's something's off, right? Storyline from beginning to end was kind of shitty. For I do not, I, this is a big gripe of mine. There must have been at least five to seven minutes of the movie that you focus on that bloody family that was near Steppenwolf in Russia. Why? Did you really need to focus seven minutes of that time when they could have focused on the heroes themselves? Oh my God. And then the idea of bringing Superman back the way they did was a lost opportunity to really make this movie kick ass. Steppenwolf, in my opinion, should have got a hold of him. Turn him evil, get him to wear the black suit that we all were all expecting for him to come, have the Justice League struggle to overcome him, and then somehow use Lois like you did, bring her in as the secret weapon to kind of change things, which would have made more sense that you'll snap him out of what he was doing and working for Steppenwolf and help the good guys beat him for once and for all. Cyborg, I didn't like at all. Like, to me, that was dumb. I don't know what the hell they had him in. They should have had Green Lantern, in my opinion. Um, Flash was okay, Ezra Miller. Mm, I don't know. I just, I prefer the TV Flash better. Grant Gustafson better than this one. Maybe that's why I'm a little bit more biased. Um, Superman, like I said, his face was off. Loved what they did with the suit. And they made him a little lighter. Um, loved when he kicked. That was one of my favorite parts. When you actually beat the crap out of the whole team. When he just pretty much they woke his ass up and he he was grabbing everybody and then he noticed the flash going around and he kind of looks at him and the flash is like what the hell and then that, that scene was cool loved how he kind of said uh when you grab batman he goes do you bleed and he kind of chucked him that was amazing uh special effects okay uh the plot of the story was dumb like i don't know it was just a miss opportunities everywhere in my opinion not the greatest Henry Cavill okay he was only in it for like about say seven or ten minutes the most and even then he fought Steppenwolf a couple of times quickly went to go save some civilians as they call it which is kind of dumb post credit scenes cool when you see him race the flash kind of like comic book reference who's faster Superman or flash that was pretty cool um, like I said, they dumbed down Ben Affleck. I love the interaction between Diana and Bruce, especially the whole uh, bringing up of uh, the Steve Trevor part, and she kind of throws him there. It's like, you're talking about me wanting to bring him back from the dead, but yet you're the one who hid yourself. Like, don't be a hypocrite, pretty much. Uh, Lois uh, character was okay. Diane Lane, neat. Uh, but like I said, I felt empty. Like, I didn't get... It was cool that you've seen all the DC guys together and you've seen Aquaman. Aquaman's character was pretty cool. That was the one breakout role for me, just like how I was saying Wonder Woman was for Batman versus Superman, Gal Gadot there. Those two uh, things were fine. Batman was eh, a mess. Flash definitely in Cyborg, gone. Like, I wouldn't even put him in there. But anyways, then you had J.K. Simmons as uh, Commissioner Gordon. Just didn't seem right. I don't know. It just For the little role that they had him in, like, there's no point. You're JJ, Spider-Man, stick there. But uh, my Robo final thoughts, I wouldn't recommend this to you guys. So you know what? You have to see Justice League. If not, it's the end of the world. No, kind of glad that they're going in a different direction uh, with the heroes. I uh, can't wait to see Wonder Woman 84. That'll be amazing. I don't know 
what Robin, Robert Pattinson's Batman's going to bring us. We already got uh, Joaquin's Joker, which is not even connected, as far as we know. Actors did as best as they can. I just still want to see. I'm curious to see what uh, Zack Snyder's uh, cut would have been. That's what we should have got, and I think they should personally release it. So release the Snyder Cut for the 50th million time that everybody's been crying about. That's one movie that we definitely need to get to kind of complete all this and bring Henry Cavill back. But uh, it's about an hour and about 50 minutes long. So I don't know. I'm glad that they're moving ahead with some of the characters like Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Those are the pluses out of Justice League, in my opinion. Hit hits on that angle but misses when you brought back superman which they could have done so much more with that role but uh funny here and there action you got your action but they needed to be more action in my opinion especially when you got the justice league man i think batman vs superman was a little bit more uh up there than this was but hey what are you gonna do could it steppenwolf could have been better he was much better than wonder woman's aries i'll tell you right now but still not up to the caliber they need to be. Not like how they refocus with Aquaman and uh, hopefully, uh, what do you call it? Wonder Woman 84. Can't wait for that. But anyways, those are my thoughts, guys, on Justice League. I hope you guys like this review. Like I always say, like, share, subscribe. Comment in the comment section below. Tell me your thoughts on Justice League. Did you like it? Did you buy it? Did you watch it? I don't know. You guys let me know. You can shit on all you want. Just keep it respectful in the comment section. Check out my other movie reviews right here on the Movie Throne. And like always, stay tuned for more reviews coming your way. There'll be more later this week and the rest of this month. And stay tuned for my podcast. So until then, be the hell good. Stay off the King's Throne. And I will see you very soon. Take it easy.